This is a quarterback guru, people, and a producer of Elite 11 docuseries, and currently the host of the It Factory podcast and owner of like a Paris football team. We gotta get what, you there. What don't we you do? We gotta get you there. When am I going, Yogi Roth? You pick, you pick the home game. June, July, it's an Olympic year. You probably got some gig over there in the Olympics. Are you look, going to be in Paris? Oh yeah. For oh, how yeah. long? I, we're working through that, you know. Two kids. I was Is say. it just wife and I? I don't know. It's on me to present the options. When does this start? Let's talk about this. Yeah, so, tell, me, tell me all about this. The European because... League of Football. Okay. We all grew up with NFL Europe and uh -huh. then it fell apart. But everybody's kept playing, kept playing in the communities, whether you're in Germany, whether you're in France, whether you're in Austria, you name it, everybody's yeah. kept playing. And then a couple of years ago, they're like, well, let's start a league and make it kind of the premier league in Europe. So yeah. it's the European League of Football. It is the premier league. They went from 14 teams a couple of years ago. They added a few. Paris was one of them. And a good friend of mine, Jason Johnson, played quarterback at the University of Arizona, a little bit in the NFL, yeah. CFL. Anyway, he called along with uh, some of the other, other guys on the ownership group. And they just said, hey, you want to be part of this thing? And I said, yeah, tell me about it. And on your roster, you have 40 that are from your home country, which is France for us, okay. which is the obvious, the inverse of what NFL Europe was. It was yeah. most players were from the US. Then you get a handful from Europe, and then you get four from the US. And what I love doing is placing guys from the US and helping our staff find these gems that, okay, their NFL dream ended. And as you know this, and we're all huge fans, like the mental health element of the game is identity is who am I, what am I, how am I gonna figure life out? And it's like, what if you had a graceful goodbye to this game? And Kyle Sweet was one of our key Americans last year, played, he was with the Rams for a minute. Yeah. It was COVID, his dad died, he was trying to figure out his own life. And we said, hey, come play for our team. Became an all-conference player, had a blast and just got to experience a summer in Europe. And it's the Paris Musketeers. It's the Musketeers. Paris Musketeers. Musketeers. I need gears. Oh, I need yeah. gear. I had gear on, but I was like, all right, I, oh, I won't Oh, no, wear I need it gear. But I'll, need I'll gear. send you some is, gear. Is this the team by any chance that, like, Tyreek Hill It smoked? is the team. How did you let this happen? Are you joking? No, Let's that's Let's take our a team. look at this. This is Tyreek Hill, the Paris Musketeers, <laughs> Darius Butler laughing because these DBs can't handle Tyreek. But well, tell I mean, look, Go on. let me just be, number one, <laughs> How about our, the opportunity for our guys to go line up and go do that? How I think did that happen? Was, he came over, he had a speed camp, and that's our stadium, by the way. Look at that beautiful stadium. That's where we play It is game. gorgeous. And it gets packed. Fan base is off the hook. And, and look, I think for our guys, like they were number one, excited to do it. And, and number two, like a lot of the guys that play on our team, they, they love football, but they also have nine to fives. Like it's a really unique experience. Some of them also find their way and have gone to the NFL, gone to the XFL. Like it's a cool blend of some guys who just love football and they're in their early 30s and some are early 20s and they have a dream to make it to the NFL or make it to the XFL. So it's a really cool combination. We just finished like our OTAs. Like we have that as well, which is pretty cool. So is it like, just totally the thing. same? So like when we changed the kickoff rule, did they? It's already done. We're ahead of the game. Just, really? Yeah. You already have the game. XFL rules? Come watch it. We have the I ELF know. rules, the European League of Football rules, and then everybody else watched and said, yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Do you have a mascot? We have, we have. Then I'm in, as yes. all, the internet knows. We have a mascot, we have will, team, be there. we have flags, we have chants. I went to the first home game last year, and they were doing chants, and I stood outside, because you know, I'm just into the people, and I'm like, what made you drive three hours here? Why are of thousands course. of people lining up? I could just see you up? back there, just yeah, <laughs> No, Mike, just kind of hanging out, man, on the street. Yes, people, totally. Yeah, of course. And they were like, we love football. We have to get, oh, do you have a water? Okay, good. Yeah, and that, sure. that's the thing, they, they love football, and football is a global game. I think the NFL just announced. Do you have one in Poland? I, I don't know, you know call, what? Call, me, uh, when, call you, me when there's a yeah, polling team, be a, and then the I yeah, could definitely do that. Be, okay, yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. buy into that ownership group. Yeah. Okay, five-star quarterback. <laughs> this is back in 2020, Caleb Williams, USC stud, mm -hmm. probably number one overall, and J.J. Right McCarthy. Right in the middle right there, right near your finger, right there in the middle. Where is he? Right there, go Where? left a little bit. I don't see him. Up. Okay, there. got it. Okay, so um, they're all here, and they were in. They're, they were part of the Elite Eleven class of 2020. Yep. You wrote about them back in 2022, or before that, when this book was published uh, back then. How did you sort of know that, or did, did you know that these two would be standouts as far as the, their next two years? Yeah, I think when I look back on almost 20 years of the Elite Eleven, certain players have always stood out. It's very few and far between. Jameis Winston, first year uh, I saw him, I was like. This guy's different. You could just tell. And his career was that. Uh, Trevor Lawrence was the same way. Tua had this infectious it factor to him that was just different. We've talked about yeah. that before in the past. I felt even Justin Fields had it from an acumen standpoint. Like he was so obsessed with the craft. Caleb was the same way. 
Like you knew Caleb even as a sophomore in high school, like, hey, who's this guy? His plan is a little different. And then he got there and it was a pandemic elite 11 year. And he was uh, incredibly friendly with everybody, but he also came to win. Like he had a different mindset to him that you could just feel. And guys came out of that elite 11 that summer and said, whoa, something's different. And it's fun when you dive into the book about him and he talks about like whether it's a letter to his younger self or how he projected the game moving forward coming out of high school or even just being in junior high. Like from jump, he's had a plan and his lane has always been about the game. And mm -hmm. I think what's uh, you know part of the deal when you're the number one pick is that everything outside of the game gets picked apart. What you wear, what you drive, what basketball game you're at, like you name it, it gets picked apart. And for him, I, I I was with, uh, I was at his pro day the other day and I was talking to people in his circle and I'm like, he's never gotten in trouble once What's off the circle? field. What's his circle? Tell me his circle. He doesn't have an well, agent, so that's unconventional, that's different. He's got a management different. team. Okay, so he's got the same got, people who've been team. around okay, him. Great. I mean, let, let's just be blunt. Caleb Williams is a true one percenter. And by that, he's the first NIL quarterback in the history of the transfer portal to truly be in a major market, yeah. in the biggest market in college football. So to deal with that and to operate at the level he did and win a Heisman, it's just never been done before. Yeah. So I think it, so NFL it's a, get it's used a little to it different. And fan bases get used to it. Yeah, you, that's what it's going to be moving forward. And I think for Caleb, everything he's done has been, you know, a lot of times for the first time, you know, transferring to LA, NIL, huge deals, other players in the NIL community or in the transfer world coming because of him. I mean, he's been this magnet from jump and it got put on a grand stage when he got here in right. LA. What did you see at his pro day? I mean, it, Done what, this long what? enough to know that these guys should complete every pass. I mean, wow, you know, like they're, they're the wow throws, but he's done them with shoulder pads on. He's done them in real games. I didn't see anything that surprised me, shocked me. It was, yes, he's going to deal. Another of day at the he office. It's another day at the office. Uh, he, he lives for this. I think the thing that doesn't get enough play and did at the combine was, oh my gosh, he was the last guy standing on the practice field. Every practice I've gone to as an analyst at USC, I've called numerous of his games. He's always the last guy. And it's not because he's trying to hit the goalpost and get extra drill work in. It's because he wants to hang with the fellas. And, and I learned this uh, from Tom Brady probably 15 years ago. I read an article. I give it to every high school quarterback now, which is you are either an extension of the staff or an extension of the huddle. And Brady goes, no, I'm an extension of the huddle. Caleb's the same way. And I love that lens of the world of, like, I'm an extension of the fellas. I'm not mm -hmm. just an extension of the staff. And I think there's a difference there, especially in the – NIL world or number one draft pick world, like you have to pour yourself into the teammates versus what the franchise says you are, what the staff says you are. And he's, he's unique there. I mean, he's as personal of a teammate as you're gonna find. He's gonna have no problem assimilating if he is the number one pick. I think we all project him to be that in mm -hmm. Chicago. And, and he'll, he'll, he'll do exactly what he's done. If he has the right system around him, he'll kill it. He's got Keenan there. Like I'd, I'd be excited yes. to see that, of course. Like DC could make some crazy move if Chicago isn't for some reason in love with him. Why? So if all of this is true and he's dealing and he's this one of the fellas, why is he polarizing? Why? Well, nobody's done what he's done. Name another college athlete that went to Milan and walked on the runway prior to a college football season. Mm -hmm. Like name another college player that's got multi-million dollar NIL deals. Like name another college player, X, Y, like you just keep going. Will it affect him knowing him? Because it's like a lot, it's a lot. I think he's still... He, he went to a game and he had a pink phone case, which he's had, I'm sure, for... I don't even know why that's a thing or what that says. I don't, even, I don't want to get into that, really. But, like, he can't, he can't do anything. Yeah. He can't do anything without, without weird, weird stuff happening. Yeah, well, I think there's two sides to it. One, uh, he's, he's got the ability to block things out because that's the world he's in. Two, he is a human. And I think that that gets lost. We, it's why we wrote the book, is so many players don't meet other people's expectations. He may not meet the expectations of a number one pick. Like, we could have the debate, did Jameis meet the expectation of our number one pick? I don't know, right? Like, no. like what does that even mean? What is the expectation, did Jared Goff meet the expectation of our number one pick? Took a team to the Super Bowl, and then they said, hey, we want somebody else. Took yeah, that I, team to the I, NFC Championship I'm, I'm, I'm more confused, I'm just confused about like, I do this temperature check with Chicago, and I'm like, 
Justin Fields. Get, they're like, don't get rid of Justin Fields. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, but what? And then they don't want Caleb. And then it's like, and then I said the commanders could trade up. And then Chicago was like, shut up. Like, yeah. he's, so the, it, it's a, it's a, I don't want him. I don't, and I don't understand where any of that comes from. It almost feels like to me a little bit like, like Chicago is not ready for him. Like, yeah. they're not ready to have this caliber of a player or something. Yeah, it, they're it used funky. to like the 35 years of I don't know, everything else. I don't know. But, but, not, but it's, it's weird. It's, it's, I don't like it. I don't like it. I've done, I feel like, every radio show in Chicago talking about yeah. this exact subject. Chicago's for wild. Reasons. Yeah. And to me, it just makes the most sense. You got the number one pick. He got a chance to be a transformational player. What he does, you know, it's all the terms, right? The off-platform, off-schedule, mm -hmm. like, is special. He also can play within the pocket, and that will be the challenge, of course, in the NFL. But mm -hmm. he's proven to do it. I mean, they had drills at SC where they'd have a whole period where he'd just have to sit in the pocket. You're not allowed to get out of it just to drill that. And he's still young. He's still going to be his third year ever as a full-time starter will be as a rookie in the NFL. And every rookie, I can remember when uh, – Various first rounders told me this. Sam Darnold told me this. He said the hardest year is your rookie year because you go from big bowl game, or you know Caleb didn't have a bowl game, but he had all the dialogue around him in the draft as mm -hmm. he came out, etc., to combine, pro day, interviews, mini camp, OTAs, training camp, and then your season's twice as long, potentially as college, and like they all hit a wall. Like mm -hmm. they, it's just it's just a hard season that first year. So he won't be everything that Chicago dreams of him to be today if he goes there, but he's gonna be, he can be a cornerstone of this thing, and this thing can flip. You saw it with Justin Fields, like he was gonna be the cornerstone of it. So they have to make a decision, and I just hope this because we've seen it so many times. If you don't have everything around you, having Keenan Allen's great. But if you're front office, if you're offensive line, if you're position coach, if you're assistant quarterback coach, like if everything isn't in place, mm -hmm. look at Russ when he went to Pete and the Seahawks. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was so beautifully set up for his success. I don't know what that is like intimately in Chicago.